Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Vlog where we discuss activity that goes on here with the Buzz Reaper channel. That includes things like current events, headlines that are in the news, pop culture, social media technology, and items of interest that come up during the week that allow us to have a little bit of a dialogue. If this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. If you are watching this on New Tech and or a subscriber here on YouTube, of course, all of you guys, I appreciate all of your support. We start things off with Yahoo News. CNN gives Fauci a pass after bombshell Wuhan report. And as you guys may be familiar, of course, Dr. Fauci appeared before Congress to explain the incidents involving the gain of function research. Now, that's a whole other topic. But what I wanted to get into, ironically enough, is out of the intercept. New details emerge about C virus research at Chinese lab. More than 900 pages of materials related to U.S. funded C virus research in China was released following a FOIA, a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit by The Intercept. We'll get into The Intercept here in a minute, but this was very interesting. One of the grants titled Understanding the Risk of Bat C Virus Emergence outlines an ambitious effort led by EcoHealth Alliance President Peter Daszak to screen thousands of bat, bat samples for novel C virus. The research also involves screening people who work with live animals. The documents contain several critical details about the research in Wuhan, including the fact that the key experimental work with humanized mice was conducted at a biosafety level three lab at Wuhan University Center for Animal Experiment and not at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, as was previously assumed. The documents raised additional questions about the theory that the pandemic may have begun in, the lab, in a lab accident, an idea that Dazak has aggressively dismissed. Now, this is actually some of the uh, EcoHealth information, but I wanted to come down here to this section with Elena Chan, a molecular biologist at the uh, Broad Institute, said the documents show that EcoHealth Alliance has reasons to take the lab leak theory seriously. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. In this proposal, they actually point out that they know how risky the work or this work is. They keep talking about people potentially getting bitten, and they kept records of everyone who got bitten, Chan said. Does EcoHealth have those records, and if not, how can they possibly rule out a research-related accident? All right, so basically, to, to, you know, to kind of narrow it all down for you guys. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not a physician. I'm not a virologist. I'm not a biologist. Essentially, a, a researcher in Wuhan discovered that the coronal aspect of the coronavirus or the coronavirus actually derived from bats. So that's where it originally came from and they were just doing research on the virus which they may have manipulated or added proteins and other things to it to kind of see if they could uh, uh, create an environment where it would affect human beings if it ever affected human beings and how it would affect human beings and of course this is very loosely based information here i'm not going into all this the the, the biological and and chemical reactions and processes and all that stuff i'm just giving you guys a layman's breakdown of what was going on so this is why you hear things like the virus was weaponized and you hear all these sorts of interpretations that uh, for example the barbs were added to the actual corona and that's why we take the uh, uh the vaccine so that the the so that the uh um the spikes on the corona become ineffective and, and that sort of thing so that's why you're hearing all of those types of uh descriptions of how it all works but as we can see here and in this document which i will link below this video i would encourage you guys to give it a read because there's a lot of interesting information it is broken down simple enough for you to read it and understand it but the information here is very impactful very direct and of course part of the point was to uh was to illustrate was really to defend this Danzig guy but it ended up actually illustrating that um what was actually being said about the Wuhan lab leak and issues out of China were actually confirmed. Now, here's the interesting thing is from Glenn Greenwald, who used to be the CEO and owner of The Intercept, and he was essentially pushed out because of him discussing topics like this 
that uh, the company basically just bought him out or pushed him out of his own company. So he says, this is amazing. In July, The Intercept had one of its most dishonest partisan hacks, Robert McKay, basically call Rand Paul a liar and deranged conspiracy theorist over and over for suggesting that Fauci funded research that could have caused the pandemic. And of course, that's a separate article in itself. I'm just trying to give you guys the highlights. And this is also from The Intercept here that I just read to you. Two, but yesterday, the very same Intercept admits it sought documents about Fauci-funded research by EcoHealth, Peter Danzig's group, that raised additional questions about the theory that the pandemic may have begun in a lab accident. And of course, this is a link to the actual article I read. And this was from a section I just read to you guys. Three, specifically the document The Intercept sought, which I'll bet any amount of money they thought would debunk Paul and vindicate Fauci, instead did the opposite. Oops. The docs, the docs more than ever linked Dazak's research to possible COVID origins. Four, even when they accidentally do reporting, <laughs> which is kind of amusing, the, uh, that undermines liberal political causes, Intercept editors have to make sure they stay loyal. The at the admit, or, okay, okay, so it must be they admit that Dazic's highly risky research was funded by NIAID or NIAID, but never once mentioned the name Fauci, the director of this agency. So you can kind of see how the narrative unfolds and how call whatever groups of people in government if you want however you want to address them on how they're trying to maintain all this with the censorship and all that's going on right now and of course with uh, dr fauci being in the spotlight particularly with congress and with Rand paul because everything Rand said was correct so usually the strategy when it comes to the way these groups of people who are trying to push this narrative operate is they try to make anyone who opposes them look foolish or ignorant or not having the information, not being trustworthy or having, uh, you know, particular credential. I, I'm trying to think of the word I was trying to think of there, not having the, 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 you know, the authoritative voice or, or the, uh, you know, or the, the credibility. There we go. That's the word I was looking for the credibility. So they try to go after people, make them look dumb, remove their credibility, say they're dishonest, or at worst, when they can't really prove very much about what they're trying to do is they'll say it's a conspiracy theorist because then they just start going off the rails and just start going into what they call a conspiracy theory. Now, let me give you an illustration that happened this week with CPAC. Uh, th this is from Disclosed TV. Just in, Jason Miller, Trump aide and CEO of Gitter, has been detained at the Brazilian International Airport in Brazil while he was boarding a plane to return to the U.S., all right, so this is uh, just your standard general uh, headline from uh, Disclosed TV, which is what journalists are supposed to do, to give you the general idea and not go into some other interpretive uh, make-believe information. And you see, we hear it straight from Jason. If you guys haven't already, if you're not following me on Gitter, I am Buzz Weaver on Gitter right here. So if you guys want to follow me on Gitter, by all means, please do so. You see, Jason says... This afternoon, my traveling party was questioned for three hours at the airport in Brazil after having attended this weekend's CPAC, Brazil Conference. We were not accused of any wrongdoing and told only that they wanted to talk, which is the very famous line, of course. We informed them that we had nothing to say and were eventually released to fly back to the United States. Our goal of sharing free speech around the world continues. So about... They say about 13% of users on Getter are from Brazil. But the point being here is that Twitter had a complete uh, breakdown that Jason Miller wasn't detained or further humiliated or even embarrassed because, of course, that is always their narrative to make anybody associated with President Trump look bad and, of course, to always keep that dark cloud over Trump. Now, to give you an illustration, if you're following me on social media, you would have seen my post where I broke it down between this is what journalism says which I just read to you. This is what a journalist, a responsible, uh, capable, or as Glenn Greenwald said, when they do accidental journalism, when they actually do journalism, they tell you the information. And then, of course, we had uh, what Jason Miller said. And this is the way it's interpreted by the Democrats and the left, the mainstream media, and the legacy media. If you don't think January 6th was organized and coordinated 
Look at what happened in Brazil right now. An attempted January 6th inspired insurrection coordinated by Jason Miller, Steve Bannon, and Don Jr. This is an international crime syndicate. Now, you see how they have to inject everything. First, it was the Proud Boys or the Oath Keepers or Patriot Prayer that were organizing it or the QAnon shaman that organized it or any number of right wing, as they call it, or white supremacist organized people that were the ones creating the supposed insurrection. But now they have to break it down and say Jason Miller, Steve Bannon, and Don Jr. because it's always going to be a creeping uh, storyline. Because as we heard from the FBI, they said that there was no organization, there was no group of people that organized this particular event that happened at the at, on January 6th, much less an insurrection, much less, much less any sort of takeover because in what... First of all, it was never successful. It was not coordinated. The police let people in. We heard all the disinformation about the police getting hit on the head. That was the one that had the helmet. And then, of course, Officer Sicknick, who actually died from cardiovascular issues, as well as some of the other officers. And finding that information from the uh, coroner there at the Capitol is very difficult to find. But most of all of the police officers that were there had some sort of cardiovascular problem. So the only people who died as a result of it was uh, the young lady who was in the Air Force. And um, one other person was, was, was seriously injured. Those were two females. But overall, this is how the left and the narrative-driven people try to interpret things. And this is very similar to what we saw with Gre Greg Greenwald, or Glenn, Glenn Greenwald, and how they try to drive a narrative in a particular way. And as you can see here, CNN gives Fauci a pass after bombshell Wuhan report. So... They're not going to let their guys, their team, get into any kind of trouble. And the same thing can be said, perhaps, of Andrew Cuomo. No, they couldn't have, uh, you know, the COVID champion Cuomo look like he was incompetent and incapable of handling and dealing with COVID when he was the counter to President Trump at the time because President Trump's approval was going up and they could not have that. They had to have some sort of counter to any sort of... Uh, popularity that President Trump and or influence he was getting. So they went over to Andrew Cuomo, who, of course, they had to go after with Me Too movement because they didn't want to associate him with COVID. So that's just the way they drive the narrative. But I would encourage you guys to check out the article from The Intercept without a doubt. And if you want, you can always look up uh, Glenn on uh, Twitter. If you guys are on Twitter, of course, you can follow me there as well. I know there's a lot of uh, concerns and issues concerning uh, Twitter and being on Twitter or, you know, mainstream type uh, social media. But nonetheless, that's what I have for you guys this week. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for this Friday vlog. Thank you for the likes, the shares, and the comments. And if you haven't already, below this video, you can find the various social media sites that I belong to. So make sure you avail yourselves of that. And as you see there appearing on the screen, that would be the channel icon to subscribe along with notifications. That way you guys will know when there's content here on the channel. And for some of you, even the video shorts that I post out here on YouTube. And I will see you guys right there behind that camera next week.